I always have a song going through my head. My interior monologue, I guess it's just like one big, one big playlist, I suppose, and it can be distracting sometimes, especially when you're trying to sit quietly in prayer and you just have all these songs among everything else running through your head. Of course, this whole last week, suffice it to say, the one song in my head more than, more than any others was that crazy old uh, Tex-Mex folk song, There Was a Man uh, from Jericho Named Zacchaeus. Now, if you haven't heard this song, fair warning. You know, I don't want, you know, maybe we have FOMO. But unless you want this song in your head the rest of your life, I recommend just letting it go and not, not looking it up. In any case, it's kind of a, it's a fun, peppy little, little song. And I think because of that, maybe we see this Zacchaeus episode as some kind of like comic, friendly little, little story, you know? about this little guy running up a tree and coming down again. He's out of breath and all red-faced and things like that. But we can't let this distract us from the fact that I think this Zacchaeus episode is not some, some jovial, comic kind of encounter. It's actually really intense. And it's really bold and, and, and shaking in some ways. So first of all, there's Zacchaeus himself, who was a bad man. He was the chief tax collector. So he made his money not only off skimming his own people, but also from all the people, the tax collectors that he was overseeing. Uh, He had a a ton of money, you know, in this this happening town of Jericho. Like the world was his oyster. But I imagine he felt super empty. He probably didn't have too many friends since he made his living off of extorting everybody. He had to have known this, this interior sadness and this, this desire that there, there has, to just be, has to be more to my life than this. The people said of, of Zacchaeus, you know, he's going to stay at the house of a sinner. Zacchaeus wasn't the kind of guy that they would have thought you would write happy, peppy, maraca including songs about. But when life itself personified in Jesus, when love itself, when truth and goodness and beauty itself walked through his town and and came his way, he wasn't going to miss out. He had to have known that that Jesus was the one to really fill that spot deep down that he kept trying to fill with other things. And so Zacchaeus is looking to see Jesus. Of course, Jesus already knows who Zacchaeus is. He knows him by name, and in a sense has come to, to seek him out in order to, to bring him to that place that he was meant to be at. Jesus says, the Son of Man has come to seek and save what was lost. The word lost in that passage means just in the wrong place. Jesus came to bring him back into the, the right place in his life. Of course, the, the crowd doesn't understand this. Now, by the way, Zacchaeus, in order to to get to where Jesus was, had to go out into that crowd that probably wasn't going to be too friendly towards him. Well, we're at a parade. You know, we might let you know, little kids go in front so that they can, they can see. They were going to let Zacchaeus in. Probably a good opportunity if he was trying to like, get through the, the crowd to, you know, just kind of give him a little elbow to the forehead kind of a thing. He deserved it. But, of course, mercy is undeserved. And the God of mercy came to set things right. The crowd forgot about what we heard in our passage from wisdom. That the whole universe to God is just like a grain of wheat or whatever or a drop of dew. But yet to this God for whom the entire universe is just like a drop or a grain. He is a lover of souls and he knows and he sees and he loves each and every person. As we hear what... What God didn't love just wouldn't have, wouldn't have existed. And that they didn't see Zacchaeus as someone who God has, has sustained and, and preserved so that he could become the person that ultimately he was created to be. So we hear Jesus reclaim his identity. This man, too, is a descendant of Abraham. And he was willing to just give away the farm to get back to that place where he belonged in relationship with the Lord. Half my possessions I'll give to the poor. And I'll repay four times anyone I ever extorted. Which again was everybody. 
So he wouldn't have been left with very much, but he found something of deeper value. And Jesus saw in him something to be saved, something to be redeemed. Because he saw him as a beloved child of Abraham. All this fits into our life, of course, too. Because I think if we see that this passage is just like a fun, you know, comical little scene, I think we're just not going to be inspired. We're not going to be moved by a fun story about a guy in a tree. And I don't think we're meant to be. This is meant to, to be intense for us as well and to, to shake us up as well. Knowing that the God of the universe, that he sees us, each and every one of us, that he has loved us and thought us into existence. And that there's no uh, brokenness, there's no sin, there's no wandering, there's no shame, there's no being lost that Jesus can't enter into and put back together. Today's a good reminder for us of the depth of God's great love for us. But also, too, then God's great love for each and every person out there that he has made. And then part of our call as missionary disciples is to go out and to be Jesus for them or to help them to know that Jesus sees them too. That just like us, he knows them by name. And he has come to, to reclaim who they are in the depth of their being. I think in a particular way, I'm thinking that, you know, especially in the last couple of years, we all know people who, who should be with us here. And just for one reason or another or whatnot, just they haven't, they, haven't found their, they haven't found their way back. I know some of these folks just, you know, dealing with, with certain things, but they too are members of the body of Christ and members of our, of our parish. And how we should long for them to, to be reunited here with us. You know, invitation is one of the values that we hold dear here in our parish. Maybe so many of you are here because of an invitation. Perhaps there's that need to, to re-invite uh, those who have grown distant from our community. And so um, as we're looking ahead to this next year, 2023, it's a couple months off, but it's going to be here before we know it. And, of course, we love the number 23 uh, here uh, in the parish. So I'm going to throw out what I'm calling the 23 challenge. So this whole uh, next year, 2023, just one person, just one family that you know maybe that God has put on your mind and heart uh, that needs to be uh, re-invited to, to reconnect in our missionary discipleship to, to go out to them and to know uh, that they too are seen, the Lord uh, looks to be in their life and to help them receive him with, with joy. Of course, ultimately this work is God's, but we have our, our part to play. And as we encounter Christ here in the Mass today, let us know in a new and profound way Jesus' words to us. Today I must stay at your house, in our house, and know that he is alive within us, that we receive him with joy, and that we live his life and go and share his life to a world in need.